People think big crypto influencers will promote Hex. Hex community is still small. Their fans come from far bigger communities that hate Hex and will leave if they promote. Their opinion on Richard Hart and Hex doesn't matter. To them, it's not worth the risk. We must do it ourselves. And this is very important because we see a lot of people tagging these big influencers, uh, trying to get Richard Hart on the show or these big television personalities, celebrities, things like that. Hex is a small community, although it doesn't seem like that when you're in the community because it's extremely engaging and it, it is extremely like, yeah, it's extremely engaging uh, and pound for pound. It's got more things happening than any other community like pound for pound. So and you can even argue that Hex has more going on in its community than any community in crypto, considering Pulse Chain, you know, the world's largest free free airdrop coming up, and then PulseX, and uh, all those things. And then, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you could argue there's more happening, but it's still small, and it feels big, but it's still small for now. Um, and it's fringe. There's the SEC, you know, thing going on where people could, you know, people would Google it, and you see, oh, they're subpoenaing influencers. There's also, you know, this uh, stigma that everyone thinks it's a scam because you're just a scammer because you walks around in uh, silly clothing and looks like a scammer. So it has to be marketed as such. It has to be marketed as, a, it as such. And you have to understand that these, be, these people, these big influencers, if you have a couple hundred thousand followers or subscribers or you have a couple million subscribers, you are catering to the mainstream you're not catering to the fringe. You're catering. That's why they call the NBC uh, news or CNBC coverage. They call it the top because that's when everybody knows about it. That's when the opportunity has gone, at least temporarily. And it's time for a dump. It's time for the exit liquidity for the people that got in early. Okay. So there's this is why it's such an inefficient use of uh, resources and things like that. There's two, there's two things that could come of it. Uh, usually... The, the influencer will just be annoyed and probably might not even see it. And if he sees it, he'll just be annoyed and he'll just say, no, we'll just think, oh, it's that scammer or it's oh, that, uh, that, uh, it's that Ponzi scheme hex or that SEC thing hex, um, or he'll be annoyed or then. So that's probably what's going to happen. You're probably not going to get anywhere. Option two is he doesn't know Richard Hart is and just has him on and then suffers the backlash from his normie fans and then never has him on again, and never talks about him. I think that would, would, be, would be more of like a meet Kevin kind of thing. You know, it's just like, it's just like, why do we want the heat? Why do I want the heat? My community hates it. I risk losing the respect and the engagement of my community because my community is all a bunch of Bitcoin losers or Ethereum people. And then you could have, they even like Richard Hart and they connect with Richard Hart, but it doesn't matter <laughs> because their following is, a bunch of you know normies and they're just not good leads so that would be what's that guy's name the guy that he was recently on who's the guy who's recently on that could be jordan belford also i think they connected very well um richard Hart. Paul Barron network. Like Paul Barron is a watch guy. He's very famous. His followers are gold bugs and Bitcoin people. Like they're not going to, what percentage of them are going to take action? They, that means, okay, Mr. Paul Barron fan owns Amazon stock, owns gold, owns Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, not, not Solana anymore, XRP, whatever. Um, Okay, and he probably holds it on a centralized exchange. So he may or may not own crypto. So if he doesn't own crypto, he's going to open the Coinbase, which is already annoying. You have to photo, you take a photo of your ID, whatever. That's a that's a pretty seamless onboard. Then he has to send it to a MetaMask connected to hardware wallet, hopefully. If not, probably. And if so, he has to buy a $70 ledger and wait a couple of days for that to come. Is he even going to do that? Or maybe he'll just send it to MetaMask. He has to learn how to use MetaMask. Then he has to learn how to use a decentralized exchange. And he also has to not see or able be able to discern all the FUD. Like if he Googles it and he sees like, oh, SEC subpoenas, you know, or it's a scam or it's a Ponzi and can't understand blockchain, can't understand uh, trustless yield, can't understand, uh, you know, like he's going to have to be able to discern all the fact from fiction of that. It's just too many hoops to jump from. 
to jump through. Maybe you onboarded two people on that pet Paul Barron interview, probably zero. And also you have to see the chart down 95%. You also have to see the chart down 95% and be able to understand the different, understand the crypto market um, moves in tandem. Like everything else is down. You also have to understand that a logarithmic chart because linear people already think it's a pump and dump. It's just too much. <laughs> like we're not there yet. We're not there the normies come at the next the next top you know when the price is up like crazy more people are using metamask and the and uh you know uh decentralized exchanges it becomes less fringe more mainstream also people are more willing to be onboarded because they see everyone's getting rich they want to get rich that's when you could really have like convert some serious leads we're not at that point yet you need people that understand crypto better you need people that understand cycles. You need understand. You need people that understand decentralized exchanges, MetaMask, those things. And there are a lot of people. There are a lot of leads. And how do you target them? You target them with targeted marketing, right? 